Arr, mateys. Welcome to KG2 Math Under the Sea. It is I, Miss Lara, here to show you how to use your hundreds chart today in math. Will you be joining me on my adventure? I we have lots of treasure to seek, lots of learning to do, and lots of great math to be had. Can you say, our mateys? Excellent, excellent work, pirates. Now join my ship, my pirate adventure, and learn all about the number 100. Now, what is so special about the number 100? Can anyone tell me? Well, it is one of my favorite numbers in the world. I like a hundred doubloons, a hundred chests of gold, but mostly I like to count to 100 in lots of different ways. Are you ready to join me? Now, students, here is what we call 100 chart. Ah, isn't she beautiful? We start with the number one. And as you can see, we can count all the way up across the rows until we get to the number 10. And what happens is it continues in the same pattern, but the next row goes from 11 to 20, and so on all the way through the whole number chart until you get to, dun dun dun, dun. 100! Yeah. So, what I'd like you to do is just think a few things to yourself. What do you notice about the 100 chart? What patterns do you see? What interesting observations do you have? Have you seen a 100's chart before? How could you use this to help you count and become comfortable with numbers? Now, I love a hundreds chart because it can really help me add and subtract and understand patterns and numbers. Like I love, if you look at this first column, look at this kind of bright coral color. I noticed the pattern that this column all has number one in it. Like one, 11, 21, 31, 41, 51, 61, 71, 81, 91. And any of these columns, if you go down a straight line, up and down, which is a column, you'll see it ends in the same number. And it just increases from 0, 7 to 1, 7. So it's increasing by 10 every time you go up in each row. Now as you travel along the rows, they go up by 1. So you can see that in this picture, Every time you move over, you're counting forward by one. See how that has a little arrow and a plus one? So you're going up by ones when you're counting from the left to the right along each row. So one, two, three, four, five. As you count forward, you move in this direction. If you're counting up and adding one each time, you're counting in this direction. But you can do the opposite as well. You can count backwards and move from a higher number to a lower number by going from the right to the left. So for example, I could start at seven and count down and head backwards, which is towards the left. So I could go seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And each time I move horizontally, I'm actually subtracting one and counting backwards. In a similar idea, if you are counting along the columns, you are going, instead of going right to left, you're going from the top to the bottom or vice versa, you can be counting by tens. So if I go from one to 11, I'm adding 10. Or 11 to 21, I'm adding 10. So if you want to get larger numbers and you're getting bigger, you're gonna head down in the 100s chart. But if you want to go less and reduce your numbers, you can decrease by heading down or up on the numbers chart back towards the top. So for example, I could start anywhere. If I start at five and I'm heading down on the hundreds chart, I'm increasing by 10. Five, 15, 25, 35, 
45. But if I go in the other way, I'm decreasing by 10 or subtracting by 10. 45 down to 35, down to 25, down to 15, and down to 5. So you can pick any spot in the hundreds chart and choose to go up by 1 to the left or the right or up or down by 10 to the up and the down. What's really interesting about a hundreds chart as well is that it can help you understand skip counting, which is a very important tool for us to be learning right now. So I'm not sure about you, but I like skip counting by two. So I say two, four, six, eight. But there's lots of ways you can skip count by other numbers too. So this one has highlighted skip counting by fives. So if you start over here, you go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and so on. And you can even skip count backwards, 40 down to 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, 0. So what really matters to us, though, this week is understanding groups of 10. So we're going to focus on this column right here. And so we're just going to practice counting only by tenths. So here is what we care about. This column right here. And so what I'd like us to do right now is to practice saying them together. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Now you notice when I say 10, if I move up to 20 and 30, it almost sounds like it ends with the D, 30. It's spelt with T-Y, but it sounds like 30, 40. It's a little different than these numbers, which also so these numbers here, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, they sound similar. So they say teen at the end. So we want to make sure we understand the difference between the teens, T-E-E-N, teen, like 15, and the Ds, the ones that end in zero, which are like 50, 60, 70, okay? So here you can see I wrote the numbers for you beside each one. So 10 is spelled like this, 10. We got 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So your job is to practice skip counting by tens. And you can use the number chart to help you. And you can record your voice, skip counting by tens for me so that I know you practice and I know I can hear you doing it on your own. And um, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any questions and please add a voice recording so I can hear your voice skip counting. Thanks a lot. Arr. That's it for now, KG2. Please make sure you're understanding your tens and your hundreds chart. And I'll see you again soon for math under the water with Miss Laura. Cheerio for now.